What is going on everyone? Nico Lins here in the beautiful Bahamas. Please just look at how perfect this is. Beautiful day. Yes, that is an old princess that is shipwrecked up on that island over there. And that boat actually has quite the history of illegal activity, but that's a whole story for another video. This video, it's another how-to video on how to properly anchor your boat. Over the past two-ish months here in the Bahamas, I have seen people mess up anchoring in every which way possible, um, which can be dangerous to other people, dangerous to the boat. Your boat can just float away on you, which obviously nobody ever wants. And so this video, I'm gonna run you through everything, the ground tackle that's necessary with anchor and chain and anchor road how to find the right area to anchor with sandy bottom, grass bottom, the right depth to anchor in, and then the actual process of anchoring, how to do it and how much anchor road to let out. And so, should be a really helpful video for new boaters who just want to learn how to do things properly, but also experienced boaters who want to test their knowledge and make sure they know how to do everything the right way. So, enough of me talking, let's go ahead and get on into it. And real quick before we get started, I do want to say that if you like these kind of videos, if you like boating, if you like the Bahamas, if you like all this beautifulness and the wife and also, you know, big fancy boats or boats in general, please subscribe to the channel. It does help me a lot. It lets me know that you guys enjoy what I'm doing and helps me to make more videos for you guys. Liking the video below also helps and then comment what you want to see. I make these videos for you guys. So if I know what you want to watch, I can give you more of what you want. But enough of that. Let's get into it. And I also wanna mention really quick that this is gonna kinda of gonna be like a little two part series on anchoring. This one is how to just anchor a boat with a bow anchor and that's it. I'm also gonna make another video probably coming out next week about how to anchor using both a bow anchor and a stern anchor, which over here in the Bahamas, you absolutely have to know that. It keeps your stern at the beach, keeps your bow out and bow out into the waves. It's easier for people to get on and off the boat and get to the ladder and the whole nine yards. That is a little bit more complex of a skill and it's one that not everyone has to know depending on your geographic area. So that will be another video all on its own. Let's get into this video though and teach you guys how to properly anchor a boat. All right, so the very first thing that we have to talk about is ground tackle, anchor, chain, and anchor road, because without that, obviously you cannot anchor. And so I am here on our 41th center console. It's very dirty right now, so please excuse the mess. And so my ground tackle is going to be specialized for our uses. 41 foot center console. Every boat is gonna have a little bit different needs, more chain, less chain, different kinds of anchoring, anchors, depending on what kind of conditions you're in or what kind of bottom you're in. This boat lives most of its life here in the Bahamas and that's where it does all of its anchoring. So that's what we're set up for here. But this is what we're working with here. First, we have the anchor. This is a Fortress FX23. And so there are many different size anchors. You have to size that anchor for the boat. And so in the Fortress lineup, they have like an FX 16, FX 23, I think down to FX 8 or FX 4. And so this being a 41 foot boat that weighs just under 20,000 pounds, the FX 23 is the proper anchor size for this size boat. So we have that anchor and then we have it attached to a bunch of anchor chains. And they have different types of anchor chain. I'm going to always recommend that for one, get stainless steel chain. It's definitely more expensive, but it is way, way worth it. It doesn't corrode like the other galvanized chain does. It looks good and it's just a much better option overall. But when it comes to the amount of chain, I see this all too often, people using nowhere near enough chain. I also see all too often people literally just attaching, you know, their anchor road here straight to the anchor which should never happen. And the reason for that is, is that the way an anchor works is it sits flat on the bottom and then as it gets pulled this way, these two forks dig into the sand. And so in order for the anchor to work, it has to be being pulled relatively parallel to the bottom. And so what that heavy chain does here, you know, having 10 feet of it, that weighs the tongue of the anchor here down and makes sure it stays down towards the bottom. So if we have the proper amount of anchor line out, even if there's wind blowing, you know, your anchor's attached here and the road goes out that way. Even with the blowing, this is still gonna kind of create a big bow in the anchor line. That's gonna keep this tongue of the anchor down on the bottom so that it keeps pulling into the ground. So these forks keep going down in, which holds your boat. If you don't have enough chain or any chain at all, when 
uh, the wind comes and you know lifts up your anchor line and put strain on it it's going to lift this tongue which it can only go up this much and so once you go up this much if there's any more upward force it's just going to pull those forks up and out of the sands and your anchor is going to come out of the bottom and you're going to start dragging anchor and that's not good for anyone you can hit boats around you other people the boat can get away from you and all of that good stuff and so have the right sized anchor use enough anchor chain also the right sized anchor chain you know these you can get different size links if you look up online there's tons of charts about what size link to get for you know the kind of anchor but all of that is then connected to your main anchor road and so here we have the anchor road going into our anchor locker here and i have some more those are dock lines and then ignore that down there but this is all of our anchor rope and different size boats and different boats need a different amount of anchor road this boat i believe we have 250 feet which for what we do is more than enough you know as i mentioned earlier this boat pretty much lives in the bahamas and does all of its anchoring in you know 30 feet of water or less and so does the trick just for us and one thing we do do with our anchor road which i highly recommend everyone do is if you look here i have areas marked on the anchor road with this line that i basically wove into the twist i need to actually cut that tag in but the way i have this set up is one of these little yarn lines that marks 50 feet of anchor road not counting the chain just 50 feet of line and then if i can find the other if i can find the other one let me see where it is here oh it's here it is you can see this one has two of those I have two little neon sections that marks 100 feet of line out and then if i go further down the anchor road i also have one that has three of those marks which means that i have 150 feet of anchor road out and so that's just a really easy way for me to be able to tell you know how much anchor road i have out at a time because there is a proper amount to have out of course you can always go long but that's that and really quick something else that i do want to add about anchor is if you're ever in a pinch and you need an anchor and they don't have the perfect size anchor for your boat assuming you have space to store it always always err on the side of having too big of an anchor you know obviously a bigger anchor is just going to hold your boat in place better than the right size anchor but if you can help it never go down in size for your main anchor that is just a recipe for a nightmare if you get into a strong wind situation or anything your boats can pull the anchor up it's not going to hold your boat well it's going to drag the anchor through the bottom a whole you know host of problems can arise from that so if you can help it use the right size anchor or up a size please do not try to go down a size because that's just a recipe for disaster and a couple of quick things that i want to add quickly before we get into finding the right bottom to anchor in is that i don't think i mentioned how much chain to use i have found generally between between 12 10 to 12 feet of chain is perfect and does the job just fine in any reasonable condition that y'all are going to be out in obviously big boats with a windlass can have you know 50 feet of chain if they want but when you're doing a hand anchor situation like this out of an anchor locker 10 to 12 feet for me i have found works perfectly i encourage y'all to figure out and do your own research to you know what size it should be but 10 to 12 feet is a good guideline and then also connecting your anchor chain to the rope i mean to the anchor and then your anchor road we use these big you know d-ring shackles and then through the loop in the actual screw part of the shackle we put a zip tie so we know that that shot that shackle is not going to come undone at any point and then this is actually something that even most boat manufacturers get wrong on the the end of your anchor road down in your anchor locker most boats will have a little spot to tie the anchor line to you can see we just have it tied loosely there a lot of boats will put a d-ring or a shackle and hard fix the end of your anchor line into your anchor locker which is a huge no-no you know obviously my industry i'm a yacht broker we hire you know we don't hire the buyers we deal with higher surveyors to survey a ton of boats and one of the major findings these surveyors are always finding is the back end of the anchor line is hard fixed to the boat major major no-no if you ever get into a situation where you have to dump the anchor and dump it fast you want to be able to come in here and get, untie this and get it out of here real quick so your anchor line can just free flow out you don't want to be fiddling down there with a d-ring or a shackle or whatever it might be so your anchor line i guarantee 
three fourths of people watching this boat have a D ring or shackle down here. If your line is hard fixed to the boat, get rid of that and just tie a very basic knot like this. That makes it easy to get the line off should you need to get it off. I see that way too often. But enough of this, let's get into finding the right area to anchor. All right, so now that we went over the proper anchoring equipment to have, we need to go look for a place to anchor. You know, obviously, as you can see, I'm in clear Bahamian water, so it's very easy to tell a good place to anchor. But what you wanna look for is basically a flat, you know, piece of the seabed that is free of any obstructions, no big rock piles around where you're anchoring, no coral heads. You know, if you anchor into a rock pile, your anchor is very well gonna get stuck in that rock pile. and you might not be able to get it out from the boat, which means you have to dive down to get the anchor. But if it's in too deep of water, a lot of y'all probably aren't gonna be able to go down and get it free, which means you're just gonna have to dump the anchor, which is never a good thing. You always want an anchor on board for safety reasons. The same thing goes for coral, but arguably more importantly for coral is the coral ecosystem is struggling. And so if you have a bunch of anchor, anchor, Ella, anchors hitting coral, um, that'll kill the coral and knock the coral off. And it's just can be detrimental to that ecosystem. So you want to keep anchors as far away from coral as possible. You know, this little side note, I was watching actually down at the Black Point uh, Marina boat ramp down in Miami one time. And this boat came in, had a windlass, the anchor sitting up on the windlass, carrying two big pieces of fan coral on it, which means they clearly anchored in a little patch reef that had a bunch of fans, which for one is illegal. You cannot mess with coral. Do not be that person. It's not good to the ecosystem. Just don't do that. And so how to find, oh, and another thing too, is make sure you legally can anchor in that area. There are places, mostly in the US, where you cannot anchor due to it being a protected area or whatever it might be. And most of the modern MFDs, you know, Garmin, Furuno, Raymarine, Simrad, they're gonna have that all marked on the charts. They're very detailed these days. Or even just do a little bit of research beforehand to make sure that's an area that you're allowed to be anchored in. And so, Finding that spot that's nice and flat, free of obstructions, it's pretty easy over here in the Bahamas where you can see, you know, 50 feet down in the water if you had to. Most places in the world and country, you can't do that. And so in that case, you want to rely on one local knowledge. If you know the area, familiarize yourself with the places you can and can't where any reefs might be or obstructions or underwater cables, which that's a big one. They should be marked either on the GPS or with buoys or signs in the water. But local knowledge, Google it, read online about it. There are tons of cruiser forums out there where people talk about where they're going, how they're doing it, you know, safe places to go. Carry a cruising guide. It sounds outdated, but those cruising guides can, are extremely detailed these days and they'll tell you exact anchorages to go for different, you know, directions the wind is coming, where to anchor in that anchorage, what to look for, the whole nine yards. And then also rely also on your MFD. You know, today's, as I just said, the charts on today's MFDs, whether it be a Navionics chart, a Simrad chart, a Garmin chart, Raymarine or Furuno, they're all extremely detailed and in well-populated areas, they're pretty accurate as well. They'll tell you where there's scattered rocks, where there's coral heads and all that good stuff. And so if you can't see to the bottom, like you can here, rely on all those resources, talk to local people, read online, use a cruising guide, and look at the MFD on your boat. Though all that information combined, you should be able to get a pretty good idea of where you can and can't anchor and where it's gonna be safe and where you're not gonna hit anything. And so you can see right now, we are in a very safe area. I can see there's just sand on the bottom. That's just grass right there, no rocks. And so I would consider this an extremely good place to anchor. You know, oh, and shallow depth. That's another one I forgot to mention is you wanna make sure the water is shallow enough to anchor. You know, a general rule of thumb is that you want seven feet of anchor road out for every one foot of depth. And so if you only have 150 feet of anchor road out, you really don't wanna be anchoring in 50 feet of water. At that point, you're only gonna have you know, three feet of anchor road out for every one foot of depth if you use your entire anchor line. And so that's a situation where there's a high probability your anchor is not gonna hold very well. It's gonna continuously be popping up from the sand. Your boat's gonna drag anchor and it's not gonna work. So know kind of the limits of where you're gonna anchor. Like I said, we hold 250 feet of anchor road on the boat. So just doing some basic maths, some maths, some basic math, you know, anywhere from 40 feet ish, 40 feet shallow, or probably 35 feet and under is kind of where I would draw my limit. If it's a super, super calm day, I would feel comfortable going a little bit deeper. But 
make sure you're trying to stay under that seven to one. And I always recommend where possible, let out a longer than seven feet if there's any questions. You can never go wrong letting out more anchor road as long as you're not endangering anyone around you by swinging around. And so that's, you know, the gist of what to look for when you're looking for a place to anchor. So now we've gone over what kind of anchor and equipment to have in the right place to anchor. Let's get into the actual process of anchoring. And so I'm here, this is a great spot to anchor. There's nothing but sand on the bottom. It's protected, it's calm, it's relatively, actually it's very shallow here. I think, how deep are we looking here? Under the boat, we have five feet under the boat, so add another two and a half to three feet because of the boat. We're in eight feet of water, so I have tons of anchor, anchor, um, anchor ability here. If I don't even, I don't think that's a word, but we're gonna make it a word. So let's get into the process. And real quick, I know I mentioned that this is how I anchor this boat, hand anchoring a big center console. You know, obviously a lot of boats do have windlasses up here or through the stem. And so if you are a boat with a windlass, obviously you can just disregard the part, you know, where I'm pulling the line by hand and then putting a mat down on the gunnel to protect the gunnel. Um, that doesn't apply to you. If you are hand anchoring, all that applies to you. So this video is still useful for you. Even if you are using a windlass, you can just ignore that part about protecting the fiberglass. And then of course me manually pulling in the anchor line. All right, so we got you guys on the chest mount now so I can have two hands free and show you what I'm doing. So we have the proper anchoring equipment in here. We found a great spot to anchor. We have white sandy bottom, no rocks, no coral heads, no nothing. And the last thing we have to prepare for is the wind. And so you can see here from the ripples in the water is that the wind is coming directly at us. And let me take this off to talk real quick. That's what you want because your boat's gonna kind of pivot around where the anchor is in the sand. And so you want that wind taking you away from the anchor so that once you tie it up, when you have enough anchor road out, the weight of the boat being pushed by the wind really sets that anchor down into the sand. So we have our bow into the wind, which is what we want. And something to note on this one too, is that sometimes in really flat water where there's no wind at all, it's nice to have someone at the helm who can just bump it into reverse a couple times as you let out anchor road so that you know the anchor is set. But bows into the wind, let's go ahead and get prepared. And so, as I mentioned earlier, I use this shower mat here to protect the fiberglass. So I'm putting that here that way when i get the anchor and the the anchor chain up i have a place to put it all right so we have what we need so first thing we're going to do is get our anchor set up here and because i do have you know 10 to 12 feet of oh a very heavy anchor chain what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to lay this chain out over this bath mat so that's protecting the fiberglass no chain is hitting it and so that way my chain's there now, and now I can even rest the anchor on this if I want to, to catch my breath. And so now I'm ready to anchor, it's nice and sandy. I'm gonna go ahead and lightly drop the anchor into the water right there. And so let's go ahead and do that. So, drop. And so at this point, I'm gonna wanna open this anchor, take a wrap around this cleat, and just slowly start letting out my anchor line as the wind takes the boat back from where the anchor went down. And while I'm doing this, something I do want to mention, let me take this off. Something that I do want to mention on this one is that I've seen it so many times where people put their entire body weight into throwing that anchor and even stand up on the gunnel and try to heave it as far as possible, which really does nothing except possibly cause harm to you. You can fall overboard, pull a muscle, do whatever you have to do. It hits someone in the water if someone's down there. It's just not a good situation. That extra three to five feet you get from absolutely launching it in almost every situation is really gonna do you no good whatsoever. Just lightly lay it over, and as you do, make sure the chain is not caught up in the anchor, and it's gonna do the job just perfectly. It's less strain on you, the boat, the anchor, the whole nine yards. Just lightly drop it in the water. There's no need to absolutely throw it and yeet it over there. And so, let's get back to letting out this anchor line. All right, so as you can see, my anchor is over there. I am just slowly letting out the anchor line as I go. And so I know from looking at the screen in the back that I'm in roughly eight feet of water. And so holding true to that seven to one rule I talked about earlier, 
you know, eight feet of water times seven feet of anchor road. I should have roughly 56 feet of anchor line out. And so I mentioned earlier, I marked my lines. And so this single fluorescent mark, that's my 50 foot mark. So I know at this point I have 50 feet of anchor road out. So if I just let it a little bit further, I'll get to 56. But my general rule of thumb is if you have the ability to, which I do right now, as you can see, there is not a single boat around me anywhere and those islands are several hundred feet away from me i always let out more anchor line than i have to you can never go wrong going too short can do you really bad if you pull your anchor your anchor comes undone whatever else having too much anchor line out is not going to hurt you you just have to make sure that you can in the area and that if you spin you're not going to hit boats around you but when you're in an area like this obviously you know let out more if you feel the need to if it's super windy let it all out but i probably have i don't know 65 to 70 feet of anchor line out right now so i'm going to go ahead and tie a proper hitch around this cleat done i have a proper hitch done over the cleat here this line's not going anywhere and so now i'm just going to let the wind continue taking the boat back let this line become taut let the boat straighten out so it's directly in line with us and that's pretty much all there is to it and what you can do here is you can grab your anchor line and pull a, pull it a little bit and you'll be able to tell if it's set like i have no give whatsoever if i'm pulling all i'm doing right now is ever so slowly pulling the boat forward i can tell that that line is hard in the sand and i'm not going anywhere so now you know we're anchored we have this entire beautiful anchorage now to sit and do our thing and so it's really not a hard process whatsoever um, it just takes a little bit of know-how and common sense which sadly a lot of boaters do lack but that's pretty much all there is to it you know now we're anchored you can see the angle of the line going down it's a pretty shallow angle which you always want to go as shallow as possible which kind of goes into what i was saying earlier with going a little bit longer but well we're all anchored up here having a good time now I'm going to show you guys how to lift the anchor up, which can be done different in many different ways, but we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so the boat's anchored up. We've had our fun. We're ready to leave now. And so first we have to prepare ourselves to go ahead and get unanchored. First, have the motors on and ready to go so that when the anchor is up, you're ready to go and you're not fumbling around with your motors. And on the off chance they don't start, you're not trying to deploy an anchor again so you don't go, you know, fall into something else. And so next to get repaired, we're gonna open up our anchor locker so we can feed our line into it. And as I mentioned, I use this kind of shower mat to protect my fiberglass. And so that's there, now I'm ready to pull it. And all right, and so now that we're lifting up the anchor, there are multiple different ways to do it. Ideally, the best way is to have somebody else at the helm that's kind of bumping the throttle along to bring you closer to the anchor so you don't have to pull the entire weight of the boat. Um, for this demonstration because it's just Melly and I on board and she's holding the camera and it's also not a windy day and this boat doesn't weigh very much I'm just gonna pull on the anchor road until I get it in and show you guys how it's done so first we're gonna untie it so we're untied here and now I'm just gonna start pulling it's pretty a self-explanatory process there's not a whole lot to it it's not very hard on the center console like this and something i do want to mention though is you can see as i'm laying the line down here in the anchor locker this is the anchor goes in this chute i'm nicely laying the anchor line down both sides you know give a little bit to the right side here and then as i get closer i want to feed it a little bit to the left side and the reason for that is that next time you go to lay the you know to set your anchor out you want to have confidence that your anchor line is going to lay out nicely and you're not stuck fighting knots in it getting it out getting the anchor chain nicely and so here that's my 50 foot mark which means i pulled the boat in roughly 20 feet i have another 50 feet to go and luckily in this clear bahamian water i can see exactly where the anchor is i don't know if the camera's going to pick it up but up there i can see a black mark in the water where the anchor and anchor chain are and so i'm going ahead i'm pulling it and so as you can see here i'm starting to get close to the anchor you can probably start to see that black anchor chain right now and so once i get this close i want to make sure that my line is going on the side of the boat that has the protection on it so i'm going to keep pulling and as i get pulling the, the angle of this line to the anchor is going to keep getting shallower and shallower 
until it's shallow enough that it literally just lifts the anchor up out of the sand and I can put the anchor in the boat. All right, so I'm to my chain right now. You see, if I just pull up right here on my placemat, not to hurt the fiberglass, the anchor just comes up nice. There it is. All right, back on me. All right, so now the anchor's up. I'm just gonna, as I did earlier, I'm gonna nicely lay this chain along this placemat so I don't hurt the boat because again, 12 feet of thick stainless chain is quite heavy with the heavy anchor on the end. And so I'm gonna lift. Once I get to the anchor, grabbing the shank, keeping it, not keeping it from touching any fiberglass, I'm gonna softly put this chain in the anchor locker and then put the anchor back in this little holder. And so easy as that, the anchor is back in the boat. All right, so as you can see, the process of anchoring a boat and then also, you know, unanchoring it so that you can leave, it's not a hard process. All it takes is a little bit of know how, a little bit of practice. You know, if you've never done it and you're watching this video to learn how to do it, find a calm day, go out on your boat, no matter how small it is, and just anchor and unanchor the boat a couple times. And after probably five to seven times, you'll know exactly what you're doing, how to do it the feeling of it in the whole nine yards. But that's pretty much it in this video. And so I am actually making a part two on this video, which is gonna be how to anchor a boat using a stern anchor at the beach, which keeps your stern into the beach, bow out. It takes a little more practice, a little bit more difficult to do, but I think it's gonna be really helpful for you guys to you know, figure out how to do that. If you ever wanna come over here to the Bahamas like we do, because you have to have a stern anchor running around these waters. And so, I appreciate you guys watching. Again, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment below what you want to see. I'll see you guys in the next one.